Hey, this is Dancing Rabbit. This afternoon's video, I'd like to try to answer a question from YouTube user Shazulo that was posted on the Pagan Perspective channel comments. Now, the reason that I'm taking it here rather than at Pagan Perspective, for a couple of reasons. In the first place, we've got a real backlog of questions over at Pagan Perspective, and it could be as much as a year before this one is addressed, and I feel like it needs to be spoken to a lot sooner than that. Secondly, we have a policy at the Pagan Perspective Collaborative not to get involved in questions that might attract attacks on the channel or a lot of really negative spam. We'd like to keep things upbeat and positive. Now, not that this question isn't upbeat, positive, and an honest question. It's just maybe a little more controversial than the average topic that we pick up over there. And if the collaborative does decide to address this question, then my week's work is done. All I have to do is re-upload. Okay, Shazulo's question. Here's a question for you guys. Hope you don't mind this coming from a Christian. If one pagan views their gods as literal, personal beings, and another pagan views the same gods as merely symbolic, some sort of Jungian archetypes. What is the truth? And does the truth, excuse me, of does the truth of what these gods actually are matter or not? For example, if they're real, wouldn't it be disrespectful to them if a teaching circulated amongst their followers that they were not literal beings and just symbols? How can two such pagans have any harmony on such a fundamental and important issue? Thanks for hearing me out. Peace to you guys. Okay, Shazulo, let me try to answer it like this. I was a Christian, a born-again Christian, for a number of years, from when I was 14 until I was about 35. And so I have experience with um, the Christian idea of what God is and how one gets to know God. If I'm in error or in error, according to your brand of Christianity, please correct me. When I was born again as a 14-year-old, it was the result of another person sharing a number of Bible verses with me, where he pointed out that God loved me, had a plan for my life, but I wasn't experiencing this plan because I was sinful. And I couldn't work my way out of this sin, but God had provided a way out through Jesus Christ. And if I accepted his vicarious atonement that he had made for me and prayed the prayer, then I would be saved. Now, there was a lot more to the discussion than just that, but that's the bare bones of it. So I believed, I prayed, I had faith, and I became a Christian. So Christianity has largely to do with belief. This is what's called orthodoxy, correct belief. Paganism is almost the opposite. When I became a pagan, it was a quite different process. I'd been an agnostic Unitarian for about five years, and I had learned that we were accepting pagans into our uh, church. And this really bothered me because I took this to mean we were taking in all kind of superstitious, irrational people that believed in some kind of flaky supernaturalism. And this was exactly what I got away from Christianity to get away from. So I attended a couple of workshops on paganism. And I discovered sitting around the circle that there were people who believed all sorts of things. But it didn't matter. What we did was experience the sacred through myth and through ritual. This is what paganism is about. It's not an orthodoxy. It's not a set of correct beliefs. It's a way of experiencing. And that's called orthopraxy. So, how does a Christian know the nature of God? Well, through personal experience, but mainly through the scriptures. And the scriptures are just vague enough, just contradictory enough to cause 
different Christians to come up with different ideas. The first major split in the Christian Church between Eastern Orthodoxy and Western Catholicism was over the belief in whether the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son or from the Father only. And apparently there's enough scripture to back up both of them, but neither side would back down or compromise. So we have a Roman Catholic Church and we have various Eastern Orthodox Churches. Paganism is quite unlike that. Um, it really doesn't bother me that some of the members of the small group that I practice with are hard pagan, hard uh, polytheists and believe that each of the named gods is a distinct individual. It doesn't bother me that some of us are what you might call maybe soft polytheists, uh, believing that all gods are the god and all goddesses are the great goddess. Does it bother me that some of us, like myself, are more pantheistic? Or that even one of us is an atheist, doesn't believe the gods are, exist or are useful at all, either as symbols or as individuals. But he gets something out of practicing pagan ritual and reading and thinking about pagan mythology. It's a very, very different way of approaching spirituality. And I wouldn't say that it is for everyone, but it's definitely for some of us. So I hope that Shazulo, your religion continues to be good for you, for my religion continues to be good for me. This is Dancing Rabbit, wishing all of you peace.